Hi everyone, welcome to this session. So in this uh, video, I'll be basically walking you through, through the theoretical aspect of Vesicek interest rate model. The Vesicek interest rate model is a stochastic interest rate model and there are a lot of nuances to it. So this is a series uh, in which we are trying to use Vesicek interest rate model to price interest rate derivatives such as caps, uh, such as caps and floors. So first let's understand what is a Vesicek interest rate model. So Vesicek interest rate model, right? I mean, okay. So a Vesicek interest rate model is nothing but a stochastic model, okay? It's nothing but a stochastic interest rate model, which, which is a way to predict how interest rates will change over time. So, you know, it's a stochastic interest rate model, which tells how interest rates will change, will change over time. So one thing, you know, which is important to understand is sometimes people refer to us to this as stochastic, right? So why, what is the term of, what is the meaning of this term stochastic? You know, we understand what is interest rate, but what is stochastic interest rate model, right? So as I said, basic check interest rate model is a stochastic interest rate. So stochastic means random. So the word, the meaning of the word stochastic means random. So what we are essentially trying to say is if you see, right, let's say here we are, Let's say this is t equal to zero as of today, right? So this interest rate, let's say, let's say the interest rate is 5.5%, right? So, so it won't be a straight line, you know, going in the future, right? Let's say t equal to one year. This interest rate won't be a straight line. Instead, it will be something like this. So, you know, that's why we say interest rates are stochastic. That is, it is somewhat random. It is not a straight line. So I hope you understand this, why we say this as stochastic interest rate model. So, so you know, uh, the question is, um, okay. So what we say is, instead of assuming, instead of assuming interest rate will follow a clear straight path, the model assumes that the interest rate can go, interest rate can go up and down unpredictably. So sometimes it can go up, it can go down, it can go up, down. So, you know, this is something why we say this as stochastic because it is total random. See, if you see, you know, let me give you a simple example of weather, right? If you see weather, it is not constant, right? Sometimes it is, uh, you know, let's say really hot. Sometimes it's, you know, the weather is, it's not the same, you know, sometimes it will be 70 degree Fahrenheit, 71 Fahrenheit, 77 Fahrenheit, something like this. So that's, how the interest rates are also. Uh, when I'll uh, walk you through the Excel implementation of this model, I'll actually tell you how the interest rates are stochastic. I'll show you with the real market data, right? I'll show you a real market data. And that's how you'll get to know why we say this as stochastic or random. So, so uh, the model helps people, you know, to make better guess about the future interest rate and this can be further used for pricing bonds, derivatives, or managing or risk or managing risk. So, what's the need of this? So, what's the need of this model? What's the need of this model? It's basically to help people understand or make better guess or make better guess about the future interest rate
which therefore can be utilized for pricing bonds, pricing interest rate derivatives, or risk management purposes. So let me let me you know give you a quick introduction. So this is this is uh, I told you what is stochastic. What do you mean by the term stochastic? It basically means that the interest rates are random in future and those are not a straight line. And that's why we need you know when something is random in nature. That's why we need a mo model to predict those randomness. And that's why we are using a Vesicek interest rate model. So that uh, we can uh, we can predict what is the future interest rates. So let me give you a simple, uh, a quick walkthrough, right? Okay. So the basic check interest rate model, I guess it's one of the most earliest model and you know very really well known stochastic interest rate model, which was introduced by Ulrich. Basic check in 1977. So this model was introduced by Oldrich Basic in 1977. Okay, so so the Basic check model is commonly used to determine where the interest rates will move in the future. So what is the mathematical formula for this, right? So let me tell you what is the mathematical formula for Vesicek interest rate model. Formula for Vesicek interest rate model and we'll understand you know like what is what are the components of this formula how to interpret this, this formula because this is something even you might be asked in your interviews right so so the Vesicek model can be described mathematically With the following equation. With the following equation. So what is the equation? It's dRT. It's equal to A times B minus RT dT plus sigma dWt. So not so this is how the this is the equation for Vesicek interest rate model. Okay. Now, let me tell you what is each and every component here, right? So, let's go one by one. What is A? A is basically the speed of mean reversion. So, it basically tells how fast the interest rate will return to the average. how fast the interest rate will return to the average. And, uh, you know, I'll give you a simple example to make you understand all of this. Second component is B. Second component is B. B is nothing but the long-term average rate to which the interest rate reverts. It's, it is called the long-term average. Long-term average rate to which the interest rate returns. So, So B is, yeah, the long-term average. Now, RT.
RT is nothing but the interest rate at time T. And RT is nothing but the interest rate at time T. Okay, now DT. DT is nothing but the small change in time. DT is nothing but the small change in time. Okay. So now this whole component, which is A times B minus RT, you know, this whole component A times B minus RT. How can we interpret this is, let me tell you, how can we interpret this A times B minus RT? This is nothing but the expected change in the interest rate. Okay, now the next component, if you see sigma, as you all know, sigma is what? Volatility. Sigma is nothing but volatility. And the last term, DWT. As you all know, DWT is nothing but the Wiener process, right? Or it is also called the Brownian motion. It is called the Wiener process. Or it is also called the Brownian motion. Okay, so now what is this Wiener process in Vesey check? And or let's say why do we need this Wiener process, right? So this Wiener process, you know, this V, uh, this Wiener process is used to. So this Wiener process is used to represent the random or the unpredictable fluctuations in the interest rate. So the Wiener process is used to represent the random or the unpredictable random or the unpredictable fluctuations in the interest rate over time. Okay. So now what is this random fluctuation we we are saying okay you know okay what is this you i i said like okay it's uh you know there's some randomness or this unpredictable fluctuation so what is this actually in the market so if you see let's say if if there's any economic news right or let's say um you know or let's say if there's any policy changes or if Let's say there's any change change in market sentiments. Let's say if there's any change in market sentiments. So all this, you know, different factors, right? This will actually drive the changes or this will make interest rate fluctuate. All this will make interest rate fluctuation. Guys, uh, are you able to hear any noise from my background? No. Okay. Thank you. No insurance. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, all this, uh, you know, if you see all this, uh, you know, economic news, if there's any policy changes, of if if there's anything happening, you know, all the interest rate, you know, there'll be you'll see certain fluctuations in the interest rate. Now, how to model those fluctuations, right? That has been actually modeled by this term DWT, which is called the Wiener process or the Brownian motion. Okay. So, and any doubts up till now? And this DRT term, okay, this DRT term is what? Right. So, this DRT is change in interest rate. So, if you see, this is nothing but RT minus RT minus 1. Let's say this is T and this is time T minus, uh, let's say this is time T minus 1 and this is T, you know. So, this change is what is referred to as DRT. So, so what we are trying to, so basically what Vesicek was trying to model was 
how much change will happen between between uh, two time period t minus 1 t then you, you'll see t plus 1 you know you'll see t plus 2 so so essentially yeah so what basic was trying to model was this change in interest rates and how how was he trying to model this by using this equation which is a times b minus rt dt plus sigma dwt so what is he saying is you know basically this uh, this uh, specific thing you know this thing is nothing but your mean reversion process you know it is what the mean reversion process as i said it is the mean reversion process and sigma dwt is nothing but volatility times the brownian motion brownian motion is what it captures the fluctuations in the in the interest rate. I mean, the randomness, not the fluctuation, but, you know, whatever randomness uh, that this model has, it is actually being captured by this Brownian motion. So if you see in a way, if you see in a way, this part is the deterministic part, which can be determined. Deterministic basically means this can be basically determined, okay? And this is the random part or the, rent. yeah, this is the random part, you know, which is, okay? Because eventually you'll have values of A, B, R, T, D, T, but you, uh, you'll have certain randomness, right? In the interest rate, which has been modeled, sorry, which has been modeled by this process, D, W, T, which is the Brownian motion. So any any doubts up till now? Are you I was able to understand this equation? Okay, let me uh, let me give you a one more. Me, yeah, sure. Uh, so for the uh, a b uh, a uh, how, how do we come up with those deterministic values? Yeah, is so, it like a standard fixed value or uh, can you like uh, speak, speak more about that? Right. So the question you have asked is how to calculate this value, right? Uh, yeah, calculation and do we like take a constant value or the look back period when we are considering the look back period? Is there any particular thing that we should consider? Perfect. Very good question, Kushal. So, yes. So, these value A, B and sigma, right? These are the value. If you see this equation, what is the equation? DRT is equal to A times B minus RT DT plus sigma DWT, right? This is the equation, right? So in this equation, if you see uh, these specific terms, A, B, and sigma, actually, you know, we try to uh, use, uh, we try to calibrate it using the historical method. Using, sorry, using the historical data. Sorry, my bad. So there's this, there's this concept that we'll study, uh, you know, in the, in the mid of the session, which is called the MLE concept, maximum likelihood estimator. And through that, we'll be basically, you know, deriving the values of A, B, and sigma. So don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll actually give a walkthrough, but let's understand this in more detail, right? So let's say, let's say you have this. Okay, so as I said, A is what? The speed of reversion, right? If you all remember, and B is what? Long-term equilibrium. So let's say this, this long-term equilibrium is this part. Let's say this is the long-term equilibrium B. This, you know, let's say this is, this arrow is nothing but our long-term equilibrium B. So what will happen is, you know, so let's say interest rate is like this, you know. So when I say, uh, you know, the A is nothing but the speed of reversion. So what actually happens even in finance, you all know is interest rate, uh, you know, if it goes up, let's say, you know, let's say we have certain time. If it goes up, let's say, you know, it will also come down. If it goes down, it will also come up, you know, and that's why we say it's a mean, it's a mean reverting process. Why we say mean reverting? Because it comes, it, you know, it comes back to the, back to the mean, you know, and the mean is nothing but a long-term equilibrium. So let's say if you see, you know, right now we all know that the interest rates are high, right? So we all know that the Fed will decrease the interest rates, right? So we all know that this will, the interest rate are here as of now, but it will go down, you know, and eventually let's say when it goes further down, it is for sure that it will again come up, you know, Fed will again raise the interest rates, right? 
so this is so what we are basically saying is you know this uh the person basi check was very intelligent uh, trying to understand this whole concept why because because basically what we say what he was trying to deduce from his mathematical equation or what he was trying to say was if interest rates are up it will come down if it's down it will come up but the question is you know how fast you know it can it can be something like this it will go up and come like this or let's say it will go up and then come like this to the to the mean right so this the speed of how fast it will come back to the mean is defined by a okay so you know did, did you guys understand this concept so let's say if let's say this is the long term mean and this is right now you know the interest rates are here so it can either come like this it can either come like this or it can either come like this right at let's say the different values of a right so this a basically tells how fast you know this interest rate will come back to the equilibrium did you all understood or not yes bhai okay perfect perfect so so this is uh, yeah i, I had a follow up question bro oh. yeah just one just one minute oh, sorry 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 okay huh. just 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 one one minute kushal I'll, i'll i'll just complete one more point and then you know we'll i'll i'll take certain questions so as we all know this equation is what drt is equal to a times b minus rt dt plus sigma dwt right so you might be thinking may all i mean you mentioned that it will go up will come down it will go down come up but how will we know right you might be thinking how will we know whether it will go up or down right so see this equation b minus rt right so let's say rt if rt is greater than b what does this signify this basically signify that the short rate which is rt okay short rate is nothing but rt okay is greater than the long term rate or also called the equilibrium okay you can also say as equilibrium so when when rt is greater than b right so if you see this equation you know now you just see if this is this is greater than this right what will be this negative agreed or not when so when rt when rt is greater than b when this thing is greater than this thing of course this whole this whole thing will be less than zero so this will be negative so when we say it's negative so what it means is you need to adjust, it adjusts the short rate downwards so let's say if it's something like this it will adjust the short rate downwards okay so let's say at this point you are calculate you you are checking you know if it's less than 0 or greater than 0 and you see if it's negative you know let's say this is a long term equilibrium this will again go to you know here so this will adjust the short rate to downward okay so this is our first case when rt is less is greater than b but let's say in second case right when rt is less than b so this whole equation which is drt is equal to a times b minus rt you know so now this b if you see b is greater than rt right so this will be so this whole term will be positive right this whole term will be positive and what will happen if it's positive it adjust the short rate process upwards okay so basically so you know so as i said this whole equation right drt is equal to a times b minus rt dt plus sigma dwt so a is what the speed of reversion so how fast will it go back to the equilibrium right how fast will it go back to the equilibrium b is nothing but a long term equilibrium it's nothing but a long term equilibrium okay so so i hope you understood you know why what how this uh, equation is making sense what it is doing essentially is this is a long term equilibrium let's say if rates go up 
you know and if let's say b minus rt you know it sees it's it comes as negative it will again come down and it is not like it will come down just like this you know you know this small small part it first it will come here then here then here then here and it can again go up it can happen that it can again go up depending on the values of b and rt so it, you know it can be something like this and then it comes to here so now any any doubts up till now I have one question, uh, Mehul. Uh, sure. Why, uh, where do we use this YSEC uh, model, and uh, what's the need of it? Yeah. So as I said, uh, you know, in this whole project series, uh, what we are doing is we are basically trying to build a YSEC interest rate model, right? Once we build a YSEC interest rate model, we need to, uh, we need to do parameter parameter estimation, right? One means we're using the historical data. Then we'll perform simulations and then we'll price interest rate derivatives such as caps and floors. Interest rate derivatives. So this is a project series in which we are trying to price caps and floors using the Vesi check interest rate model. But otherwise, as I said in the beginning, right? If you see, as I said in the beginning, it can be further used for pricing bonds, pricing interest rate derivatives, and it can be also used for uh, risk management purposes, specifically market risk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, now I hope you all understood this. Any, any other question, guys? Okay. So now let me... We will be sharing the PDF after the session, right? Right. Okay. So let me tell you what are the strengths and the limitations of this Vesicek interest rate model. Okay. First, let me tell you the strength. Okay. Let me walk you through the strength. First is it is intuitive. What do I mean by intuitive is, see, if you see, you know, what this model is basically saying is if the interest rate, well, first it is trying to forecast the future interest rate, right? It is trying to forecast the future interest rates or you can say interest rates in the future, right? And how it is trying to do is it is saying, okay, you know, we are using a mean reverting process that if, you know, like in, you know, in the end, if it's, if it's going up, it will come down. If it's going, going down, it will come up. So, you know, the interest rate, rate will be in certain limits. And this is actually what happens even in uh, in real world, right? Uh, it is um, interest rate do not behave like stocks. You know, if you see stocks, they go, a stock can go from, you know, let's say dollar one to let's say dollar thousand. But interest rate cannot go from, you know, 1% to let's say uh, 80%. It will always remain within a certain range. And that's why this, that's what this model actually captures. So, so the concept of mean reversion aligns with how people think about interest rate returning to normal levels after the periods of highs and lows, okay? So why is it intuitive? Because the concept of mean reversion, the concept of mean reversion aligns with how people think, aligns with how people think about interest rate returning to normal after periods of highs and lows. So this is the first trend that it makes intuitive sense of using, you know, what this model is saying. Second thing is analytic uh, it has analytical solution okay how many of you actually know what is the analytical solution so analytical solution basically means it is possible to derive closed form solution
for Vesicek model or Vesicek interest rate model. So if you all know, right, if you have studied Black Scholes, right, if you have studied Black Scholes model, you used to solve Black Scholes model by PDE, by solving the PDE. So when you say you solve the PDE, that is nothing but your analytical solution. Okay, so you solve you solve this uh, Brownian or uh, this uh, equation, and uh, Brownian um, you know this you say something you use this Brownian motion equation in the beginning, uh, then you know use Ethos lemma to come up to a black scholes model equation, right? What you see, right? And that is how it is done by uh, by solving the partial differential equation. So that is what we say as analytical solution. So even Vesicek has a analytical solution to it. Now, can you guys tell me what is the difference between an analytical solution and a numerical solution? Anyone? So this we all know we need to you know use stochastic calculus or we we need to you know solve the PD, partial differential equations of uh, of the system and then we can find the final formula. What is this numerical solution? Anyone? So using the previous historical data, deriving it from the numbers, getting the closest value. Uh, sort of a range. Um, no, uh, what I guess you are saying is more on the calib um, you know, parametric estimation that use the historical data and try to find parameters and make sure the, you know, the prediction or let's say the model aligns with the market values. But in general, like what is the numerical? So if, if you guys have heard about Monte Carlo simulation, right? That is what we say as numerical solution. So even if you see the in the uh, in uh, in stocks in equity world, right? You use a uh, geometric Brownian motion to first simulate the stock prices, right? And then what you do, you basically use this equation maximum of st minus k comma zero to find the call option price, right? So you you saw what is this approach? This is called the Monte Carlo approach or the numerical solution. Similarly, you know, Vesicek can be also solved using the Monte Carlo method. And that's what we will be seeing in the Excel implementation. So uh, point I'm trying to make is uh, Vesicek model can be solved using multiple methods like analytical solution. So you can actually derive the PDE of uh, Vesicek or you can perform this numerical solution, which is performing the Monte Carlo simulation. And that's what we will be seeing in our in our Excel implementation. A any doubts up till now? Okay, I'll take that as no. So what are the limitations, right? First limitation is, it is a, single factor model. What do you mean by single factor? See, if you see this whole equation of Vesicek, if you see this equation, the model is actually dependent on this volatility term, right? Because this, because A, if you see, this is actually depend on this volatility term, right? Or sorry, um, so if you see, yeah, the volatility of the market, right? Yeah. So that's why it is called a one factor model or a single factor model because this whole Vesicek model, it's just dependent uh, on uh, the volatility of the market. But so this, so, you know, so the Vesicek model depends on the volatility of the market. And is the only factor. that affects the interest rates. 
and that's why it is called a one factor model second second uh, you know second thing is second limitation it has is uh, negative interest rates so when i'll be show, walking you through the excel implementation of vesi check interest rate model you will see that vesi check interest vesi check model actually generates uh, you know negative interest rates so vesi check model produces negative interest rates which you know it's it's like which is like unrealistic right so if you see right now the interest rates are so high you know if you are using this model and let's say if this model is giving negative interest rate our whole pricing or our whole valuation or risk management you know it will go for a toss because interest rates are so high it cannot go negative but at the same time there are different countries let's say germany right where the interest rates are so i mean you know so close to zero or sometimes negative so there all this basic check interest rate model really helps for valuation but as of now in united states or at least in india or china or anywhere else because the interest rates are so high so it is really un so you know you know if it's if it's generating negative interest rate i mean it's it's not a good model to consider so this is one of the limitation uh, of the vesi check interest rate model that it generates negative interest rates the third limitation is it assumes constant volatility see you all know that this you know as uh, as markets are uh, you know sentiments are changing interest rate also fluctuates so assuming constant volatility is you know does not fully reflect how the interest rate will behave because the volatility changes over time so you know the model assumes constant interest constant volatility which doesn't reflect which doesn't reflect how real interest rates behave so these are certain limitations of this model any 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 doubts guys any doubts or concern up till now so if you see vesi check interest rate model is called you know you'll see a lot of times in textbook that it is also considered as the short rate model right but does anyone know right why it is called a short rate model so let's say you are at this time t right and let's say t plus uh, delta t so what we are essentially trying to do with this model is we are trying to predict the interest rate here then from here till here you know let's say t plus or uh, t1 plus delta t t2 plus delta t something like this you know so what we are trying to do is we are trying to predict what are the interest rates at different point in time so th this duration if you see it's generally you know one day because uh, i mean it can be uh, different days also it's not like one day it can be one day one week but uh, generally uh, what i have seen is uh, mostly they take they consider a short uh, a short term and that's why people uh, say this as a short term interest rates so so i hope you understand because right now let's say t equal to 0 what we are trying to do is we are trying to predict the interest rate tomorrow day after tomorrow and uh, you know the days after so that's why it is called a short rate model. So let me explain. So the short rate is nothing but is a interest rate for a short period of time.
typically over a span of a day or overnight. So that's why it is called a short rate model. So I hope you understood this. If you all know, right, how a yield curves, if you see, let's say this is a yield curve, right? Let's say on the yield curve, there are different points, right? Let's say one month, two months, three months, four months. Now, now you'll see, you know, four months also being reported, six months, one year, you know, then up till, you know, 30 year. So let's say if we are trying to model each of this interest rate, you know, let's say we are at t equal to zero. So t equal to one, two, you know, up to next 252, next one year. If we are trying to model the interest rates, right? Like we'll try, we can predict using, you know, YC check, we can predict all these interest rates, right? So when I say short rate, okay, so when I say short rate, what I'm referring to is the maturity is, is the, the, when I say the short rate, it basically means the period and not the maturity. So it is not that, it is not, you know, that the short term, that this VCC cannot predict this 30 year rate. No, it can predict. So that's why I'm saying when I say short rate, it basically means the difference between the days, you know. So this is what I mean by short rate. And this is not what I'm referring to. This is, these are different maturity points. So please understand, these are different maturity points. So when I say short rate, it is basically a difference between the days, the time, and not the maturity. So I hope that is clear. Um, any questions up till now? Before uh, I jump to, uh, you know, before I jump to how, what is the maximum likelihood estimator? Any questions up till now? So maximum likelihood. Can you all tell me where have you seen this concept? In which subject have you seen this concept? Logistic regression maybe. Right. So base, basically you might have studied the concept of MLE in statistics, to be honest with you, right? But let me explain you what is MLE and how we are using MLE to find the parameters of the basic check interest rate model. So basically, you know, using we'll use the concept of MLE to find these three values, okay? And uh, I'll, I'll walk you through the Excel implementation, but before that, I really want you to understand what is the method of MLE. So MLE is a method which is used to find the best fitting parameters for a mathematical model based on the observed data, okay? So, so what is MLE? MLE is a method. MLE is a method which is used to find the best fitting parameters for a mathematical model. Basically, just give me one second. Okay. For a, for a mathematical model. And how it does it? By based on the observed data. Observed data is mostly the historical data, okay? Based on the observed data. So, Emily help us to understand which parameter makes the data most likely. Emily helps us understand which parameter makes the data we observed more most likely so what it means is basically you know this method what it does is it will choose the values of a b and sigma 
in such a way that the prediction or uh, you know that the interest rates which comes from the vesi check aligns very closely with the with the real with the market interest rates so what we are observing in the market you know, Emily will try to uh, make sure like the values of A, B and alpha, right, are such that, you know, Emily will basically, Emily will try to estimate the values of A, B and sigma, sorry, A, B and sigma in such a way that the interest rates interest rates coming out of the Vesicek interest rate model Vesicek let me write Vesicek interest rate model by VIR so so it makes sure that uh, the it Emily tries to estimate the value of AB sigma in such a way that the interest rate coming out to out of the VIR model aligns with the market data which is observed or you can say historical data okay so did you all understood or not did you all understood what is emily what is the concept okay thank you so uh, so so let's understand how do we calibrate the Vesicek interest rate model using or let's say how to find the parameters of the Vesicek model using MLE. Okay. So how to how to find the parameters of Vesi check interest rate model using Emily. Does anyone know this by any chance? So Calibrating the Vesi check model using an, an uh, Emily involves estimation of model parameters such as A, B, and Sigma. So the goal of Emily is to find the parameters which maximize the likelihood of observing the historical data given the given the Vesi check model. Okay. So calibrating the Vesi check interest rate model, the Vesi check model using Emily involves estimating the parameters, the model parameters specifically A, B and Sigma. A is nothing but the speed of reversion, B is nothing but your long uh, long term mean and uh, Sigma is nothing but your volatility from historical interest rates okay from historical interest rate so the goal of the goal of emily is to find the parameter is to find the parameter that maximizes the likelihood of observing the historical of observing the historical data given the Vesicek model given the Vesicek model okay so now let me write the steps So the first step is to discretize the Vesicek model. So what is the equ normal equation of Vesicek? DRT 
is equal to a times b minus rt dt plus sigma dw t, right? This is nothing but the equation of VC, uh, check interest rate model. So when we discretize, right? When I say discretize, what it means is we first need to convert the continuous time model into a discrete time approximation. So, so discretization means we first need to convert the continuous time model need to con into a discrete discrete time approximation so how can I, how can we discretize this equation is so nothing but drt if you see drt is nothing but rt as i said rt plus 1 minus rt which is nothing but your change in rt right a times b minus rt right delta t so this dt right will become delta t plus sigma plus sigma now this dwt will become what this thing delta et right and this is this art this what what we can say this is delta rt so this is the discretized form okay this is the discretized form so wherever you see d term those components you know d d and d those components would be discretized so, so these will be discretized from continuous to discrete form so this is what the equation is now dwt is nothing but your Wiener process, right? And if you see the Wiener process becomes nothing but this delta T ET, right? So what is delta T? Delta T is nothing but the time increment, okay? The delta T is nothing but the time increment. Time increment, let's say one day, you know? And, and this ET, it is nothing but normal random variable, right? Or we can also say random variable generated from normal distribution. So, so this ET, you can also say a random variable which is generated from, from normal distribution. And this random variable actually is nothing but your source of randomness. Because we all know why do we need to include, include this? Because we all know interest rates are not straight. You know, it, it has certain fluctuations. So that's why we need to in integrate this randomness. So once you discretize it, right? So, so the first step is to discretize your Vesitech model. The second step is to get the likelihood function. So if you see the term MLE, so this is likelihood estimation, right? So, so first, so what we'll do is we'll calculate the likelihood function, okay? So after discretizing, the next goal is to likely uh, find the likelihood function. So if you see the difference between RT plus one minus RT, right? Follows or normal distribution. So so what we are essentially saying is this whole equation, right? And this, it has a mean of A, let's say you can write in this way, normal distribution 
a times b minus r t delta t and what is your variance you know we always write in this form right normal distribution mean comma variance right so what is our variance variance is nothing but you just square this term or you can say square this this component which is it will be nothing but sigma square del t So we'll basically make sure like, you know, we'll first what we are doing in modeling is, you know, we'll, we'll basically calculate, we'll basically get this difference, right? From the market, from the market. Let's say we downloaded the markets, uh, the interest rate from the market. We, you know, find this uh, actual difference and using the Vesicek model, we'll, uh, we'll also find you know what the model is predicting and then what we will do is we'll basically take a difference of this so i'll i'll show you i'll show you in in the modeling when we try to model it and once we take the difference you know of these two basically we take the difference between the actual interest rates and the model interest rates so and then after this we say this basically follows a normal distribution and then what the next part is step three is so step three is maximizing the likelihood you know when you maximize the likelihood what does this mean Basically, what I'm trying to say here is we are maximizing, you know, we are maximizing this, you know, we are maximizing um, the chances of more, the interest rate, you know, coming from the Vesicek model. We try to maximize uh, in such a way that this value aligns very closely with the actual data. Okay. So this value aligns very closely with the actual data. How we can do this? So once we say this follows a normal distribution, we'll just take a log transformation of this value, normal distribution of actual minus this, and then we'll try to you know maximize this value. Whatever we'll get this value, we'll try to maximize this and then try to find the parameters. This might be this might be looking little confusing at the moment, but uh, you know I mean when I'll show you in practice. Uh, so if you if you see the Excel implementation, it will be very easy for you all of you to follow. But uh, as of now, do you have any doubts up till here? Okay. So let me, so this MLE we'll see, don't worry, don't worry on the MLE part. Uh, when, I'll, uh, when I'll show you in the mo modeling, it will become very easy. Otherwise, uh, just to refresh, Vesicek is nothing but a stochastic interest rate model, right? And uh, how it is trying to model is using this equation, which is DRT time is equal to A times B minus RT DT plus sigma DWT. A is nothing but the speed of rever mean reversion. B is the long-term equilibrium rate. RT is nothing but the interest rate, DT is the change in time, sigma is the volatility, and DWT is the Wiener process. So uh, let me uh, show you the Excel implementation. But as of now, up till now, any doubts, guys? Okay, I'll take that as no. So let me stop this recording and show you the Excel implementation in the next session.